Thanks for joining us on the John Mandola Show. We're driven by McCarthy Tire and Automotive Centers. We're uh, grateful to be joined by Dr. Michael Clapper from Santa Rosa, California. Uh, works at True North Health Center. Of course, uh, has a great website, drclapper.com. Uh, doctor, let's first talk about your uh, background. You have a, a vast majority of years in the medical field, 40 plus years. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you've seen in your medical career. Well, uh, hi, John. It's a pleasure to be with you and in order to uh, share my experiences with your listeners. Uh, well, I obtained uh, my standard medical school education, graduated from the University of Illinois College of Medicine in Chicago in 1972, and I practiced uh, standard uh, Western medicine and general practice for seven years and then went back uh, for training in preparation to practice out in a rural hospital. I went back for additional training in surgery, anesthesiology, orthopedics, plastic surgery, and obstetrics at the University of California in San Francisco. And I uh, practice a pretty standard brand of medicine. And something started uh, creeping into my awareness uh, as the years went by. I was still a young doc, but I realized that, one, uh, most of my patients were not getting healthier. I was uh, just juggling their medications and fiddling with their diabetes and their high blood pressure, but I really didn't know what to tell them to get themselves healthier. And I eventually left general practice, went back to do anesthesia training, finished my residency in anesthesia. And I was on the cardiovascular anesthesia service where I was putting people to sleep every day and watching surgeons open up their chest and open up their arteries. And they, um, uh, and they displayed uh, this yellow, greasy duck in their arteries that, um, uh, that turned out to be what's called atherosclerosis. It's uh, made up of fat and cholesterol, largely from our current standard American diet. And uh, it really got me thinking. Uh, my dad died of clogged arteries. I knew I was going to wind up on that operating table one day. And I realized that uh, I was eating the same type of... Uh, standard American diet full of, uh, of uh, animal products that uh, send waves of fat through the bloodstream uh, hour after hour, day after day. So I uh, decided to change my own diet. I changed to a plant-based diet, lots of uh, big salads and hearty uh, lentil stews and bean burritos and uh, big salads and colorful fruits. And wonderful things happened uh, in my own body. Uh, a 20-pound spare tire of fat melted off my waist. Uh, my cholesterol uh, had been 240, dropped down to 140. My elevated blood pressure had been uh, 170 over 100, and it dropped down to 110, 70, where it remains today. And I felt great waking up in a nice, lean, light body every day. And so I realized I now knew uh, what to tell my overweight uh, high blood pressure patients, and so much so that uh, when I left the anesthesia, um, I had just six months to go in my training, but I didn't want to spend my career putting people to sleep. I'd rather help them wake up. So I uh, went back to general practice, and for the past 30 years, I've been practicing nutritionally-based medicine, uh, helping my patients transition to a plant-based diet. And it's turned out to be the most satisfying medicine I could imagine. Uh, my patients who are able to make this transition uh, find the same wonderful changes happening in their body. They get leaner and healthier. Their blood pressures go down. And things that I was told never happened uh, as far as getting people off their high blood pressure pills and off their insulin for their diabetes started happening. And uh, I was indeed able to, um, to get them off their high blood pressure pills. In fact, I had to. They were standing up and passing out because their blood pressures were too low. And uh, so I'm the happiest doc I know. My patients get healthier now, and I practice nutritionally-based medicine. And your uh, viewers can, or listeners can uh, check out on my website. And it's turning out that plant-based nutrition is uh, is clearly going to be the wave of the future. It's the way medicine is going to be practiced. And so I find myself on the forefront of this very exciting chapter of medicine. And uh, and I tell my patients about it and uh, and tell my colleagues about it. And, and they're becoming more and more accepting as well. So 
you know, it's fun to be in, in an exciting chapter of medicine, and nice to share it with your uh, with your listeners. Talking with Dr. Michael Clapper, you can check out his website as you see it on the screen. There it is: d o c t o r k l a p e r dot com. Dr. Clapper dot com. Well, Doctor, you talk about a plant based diet that you uh, encourage people to have, and you do it yourself. Uh, you're living by it. Uh, tell us about some of the vegetables that uh, you recommend to eat, and that you do eat. And uh, I'm sure most of them are pretty darn good for you. Yes. Well, uh, in the morning, um, I have a big bowl of oatmeal with some all the colorful fruits I can find, uh, berries and uh, bananas, etc. Um, though, if you're, by the way, a, a tip for your weight loss patients, if you're trying to lose weight and you're not hungry in the morning, don't eat. Uh, don't eat breakfast. That whole idea that breakfast is the most important meal of the day really is not true. And uh, if you're trying to lose weight, you, know, you burn fat all night. And as soon as you have that morning carbohydrate, the fat burning comes to a halt there. And so the physiologists down at University of California, San Diego, are telling us, uh, if you're not hungry in the morning, don't eat. It's called intermittent fasting. And just do, drink water till noon. And, um, and, and it really accelerates the weight loss. So uh, I, I'm a lean guy, so I enjoy breakfast in the morning. But if you're trying to lose weight, feel free to just drink water in the morning uh, until noontime. So just a tip for your... Uh, both trying to shed a, uh, a big belly that they're having trouble doing there. but So that's breakfast. But uh, come lunch and dinner, boy, I eat a lot of wonderful food. Uh, every lunch and dinner has a big, colorful salad. Now, uh, lots of uh, uh, dark leafy greens, romaine lettuce, and uh, spinach, etc., and, and uh, fresh carrots and bell peppers and everything I can find in there. The, uh, doc, you know, some doc, nutrition docs say that the salad is the main dish, and they're right. So people should have a big fresh salad at least once a day, if not twice a day, lunch and dinner. And uh, my main dishes are um, uh, really hearty vegetable soups and uh, uh, with all the vegetables you can think of. There's usually a, a whole grain in there, buckwheat or millet or barley or um, uh, quinoa. Uh, but uh, again, uh, you know, carrots and bell peppers and mushrooms and uh, you know, everything that uh, looks good in the produce department, chop it up and put it in your, in your soup. And uh, season it in any international way you would like, uh, Italian style, East Indian, curries, and Mexican chilies. Uh, uh, have fun with the seasonings. Um, and so uh, they're really easy to make. And it's nice to put them in a crock pot overnight. You know, before you go to bed, throw all the ingredients and the water and the lentils and the beans in the crock pot and put the lid on and hit the button and go to bed. And it cooks all night. The next morning there it is available for you there. So, uh, so these big hearty soups and stews are, are uh, a mainstay of my lunches and dinners. And then there's always a side dish of dark leafy green vegetables. They're, they're so important because, first of all, that's where the cows get their calcium. I mean, cows don't drink milk. You know, where, where do they get all their calcium? <laughs> they're putting their bones in their milk. They get it from the green, green grass that they're eating all day. And that's where we should get our greens as well, yeah, our calcium as well. Plus, the green vegetables have all sorts of phytonutrients to prevent Alzheimer's, to keep your immune system strong. So big helpings of kale and chard and broccoli and Brussels sprouts and, and asparagus, anything that's dark and green. If you like it, buy it, rinse it off, throw it in a steamer, vegetable steamer for five minutes, put it on the plate. Put some lemon juice over it or some these flavored vinegars or a healthy salad dressing. Uh, so there's always a uh, big helping of green, uh, dark green vegetables on, on the side there. Yeah, as well as yellow vegetables, as long as you're steaming up some greens, uh, throw in some carrots or squash or sweet potato chunks. And uh, green and yellow, green and yellow should be your favorite colors when it comes to the vegetables there. And... Um, so my plate, again, uh, also contains a, um, a healthy starch, either a, a sweet potato. White potatoes are okay, uh, but as I said, a plate full of quinoa or barley or millet or any whole grain. And then pour some gravy or spaghetti sauce over, over those. So uh, my, my dinner, lunch and dinner plates have, um, have a nice helping of a healthy starch. There's always some steamed green and yellow vegetables. And there's a big salad and a hearty soup. And uh, and then I have fruit for dessert. I have a mango or some bananas, etc. So um, that's how I get through the day. I eat a lot of food, but the beauty of this food doesn't stick to you. Uh, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter if you have three bowls of vegetable soup and two helpings of kale and and three bowls of salad. It's, it's mostly fiber and water. So the glory of this kind of plant based eating is you, you can eat all you want. And you still wind up lean and healthy. You don't have to worry about calories and portion control and all that stuff. Just just eat till you're until you're full, and go and take a walk every day, and uh, you wind up lean and healthy. And 
you stay out of the clutches of people like me. You know, so I have to go to the doctors a lot. Dr. Michael Clapper here on the John Mandola Show. Uh, doctor, you talk about fiber, and, and tell us a little bit about uh, eating fibrous foods, and you know whether they're vegetables or fruits or they're grains. Uh, tell us about concentrating on those with the, getting a lot of fiber through your system every day. Yeah, it's important. You know, when I was growing up, you know, fiber always had that the connection, you know, with a little, kind of a wink and an embarrassed smell because it keeps you regular and makes your bowel movements. Okay. But we're finding out now that uh, fiber has a tremendous role to play. And what we're talking about, first of all, just chemically, uh, is the part of the whole plant that, uh, that is not absorbed and uh, brought into your bloodstream uh, for nutrition, but it stays in the intestinal tract and, uh, and helps, uh, uh, have, helps you have normal bowel function. Um, one, it certainly keeps um, the food mass, the fecal mass, moving through the intestines well. Uh, so that makes it the, you know, the, the best, the most effective treatment for constipation. And it's one of the first things people notice is uh, the folks who always had to take their laxatives because they were having these hard stools. Boy, once you get these big salads and whole grains in your, in your diet on a regular basis, uh, the, uh, the bowel movements become big and soft and easy to pass. So it's wonderful for that. But also, um, those constipated stools uh, that you have to push to, to get rid of, um, that's not a good process. It, uh, it makes the veins bulge around the intestines so people get hemorrhoids and, and other problems that way. And because um, uh, the, the stools with not enough fiber take so long to pass through the intestines that if there's any carcinogens and any cancer-causing substances that have been eaten from, from grilling the food or whatever, yeah, then that slow-moving stool gives those carcinogens a long time to rub against the colon, and that increases the risk for setting off a colon cancer. So the fiber, you know, way cuts down on the risk of colon cancer. But we're learning so much about the intestinal tract and its amazing function in the body. It turns out that the bacteria that live in our intestines, those wonderful microbiome organisms, um, many of them down in the colon will actually digest what we thought was indigestible fiber. These bacteria will digest some of that fiber, especially those in beans and lentils and other legumes, and they in turn will, that liberates um, these short chain fatty acids from the fiber that nourish the wall of the colon and actually uh, it turns into it's kind of a second meal that, uh, that actually nourishes the, the intestinal wall. So all the way around, um, uh, the, one of the beauties of a whole food plant-based diet is, is, is this bonus of the wonderful fiber that you get. So what are we talking about? It's the fiber in the leaves of a kale and in the carrots and in the cabbage and the fruits and the vegetables. We're talking about plants in their whole form. And I, and I really can't uh, overstate this. Um, so much of our diet is processed foods. And you know, once you take the, the whole grains and you grind it into powder called flour, um, you've, lost the, you've lost that fiber. Now, once you... Uh, yeah, uh, turn. You know, once you blend up or or otherwise, it, you know, turn the potatoes into chips and and the corn into corn chips. You, you've lost the fiber and and uh, and all the wonderful benefits that come from that. So, if I can say, you know, if you get it down to one sentence, um, you want you want to eat food as grown, like it was growing in the field. As you recognize, ah, that's an ear of corn as opposed to corn chips. Uh, you want to eat potatoes, not potato chips. So going back to what I originally described, those big salads are full of fiber. Those, that, those big helpings of dark leafy greens and, and yellow vegetables, they're full of fiber. The whole grains, the quinoa, the barley, the millet, those are, that's full of fiber. So it's the whole plant foods. Um, if, if you eat them in an unadulterated form, you can be sure of getting lots of all this wonderful fiber. And you're going to get all the benefits from it. And uh, you won't spend any money, more money on laxatives, and hopefully you won't spend money on doctor's visits either. So uh, fiber is really key, but it's an automatic bonus of a whole food plant-based diet. Talk about Dr. Michael Clapper. Check out his website, drclapper.com. Uh, doctor, we deal with a lot of young student athletes uh, in our area, high school, co college, a lot of amateur athletics, uh, and they they could uh, get just as much nutrition as they're ever going to want uh, eating some of these foods. And, and talk about uh, you know the big sticking point always seems to be the protein source, but uh, plants are that source for them if they choose to take them and, and take them in a healthy way. 
Oh, absolutely. I really get concerned when I see these young bodybuilders in the gym. You know, God love them. It's wonderful they're working out. Uh, but then after the workout, they go mix up a smoothie and they throw in 100 grams of, of uh, powdered protein in there and they bolt it down and it's, oh, i got to have this protein for my, uh, for my muscles. Uh, but that's not, in my opinion, a wise thing to do. Um, one, um, uh, that much concentrated protein is not gentle with the kidneys. Uh, that's a huge bolt of, of concentrated protein that bangs into the kidneys, and it stresses the kidneys, stresses the liver. That uh, when you know in the hospital, when people go into kidney failure, the first thing the nephrologist does put them on a low protein diet. They know how harmful this concentrated protein is to the uh, to the kidneys, uh, and uh, so I get really concerned about these young guys banging down all this concentrated protein powder. And second, there's really no need for that. If you think about it, the biggest animals, the most powerful beasts on the planet, elephants, buffaloes, giraffes, bulls, they grow to thousands of pounds of mammalian muscles without ever eating cheeseburgers and pepperoni pizzas. Um, All the protein that's, that's you need for your muscles are found in the plant foods. And... There are some that are especially rich in protein, and those are the legumes. Anything that grows in a pod is a legume. Beans, peas, chickpeas, lentils. And so if you have a big helping of something that has some legumes in it every day, a big bowl of lentil stew, a bean burrito, a big hummus sandwich made of chickpeas, now you're going to be getting plenty of protein. In fact, you just if you do the math, you can't eat 2,000 calories of a whole food plant-based diet with lots of, of, of legumes in it without guaranteeing yourself 60, 70 grams of high-grade protein. So it's really unnecessary uh, to, um, uh, to, uh, uh, to worry about the protein. It's very unnecessary and I think harmful to, to take extra amounts of these concentrated protein powders. And, and if you want uh, some visual proof here, I invite your readers to go on YouTube and, uh, and do a search for this name, Frank Medrano, M-E-D-R-A-N-O, Frank. Now, he's a bodybuilder fellow down in Long Beach, um, and he's a completely plant-based guy. And you watch, you, put a, you click on his insane workout, and you watch this young man who is ripped as far as his muscles go. He's com- he completely fuels his body on 100% plant-based food. And, uh, and, you'll, and you'll watch this stunning slow-motion chin-ups and, and one-handed push-ups that he does, and, and you'll see you, you absolutely don't need uh, to eat a bull to be as strong as one, that's for sure. And if you just go on uh, go on Google Images and type in vegan bodybuilder, you'll see these magnificent physiques there, uh, again, constructed on complete plant-based food. So if you think you need uh, extra protein, ask any gorilla <laughs> where he gets his protein, <laughs> and, it, and it all comes from plant-based food. So... I'll tell your readers not to relax, but eat your, have your lentil stew and your bean burritos, and uh, not made with too much grease there, and you'll uh, and you'll wind up plenty of protein. So, uh, so, so relax about the protein. Just eat full plant foods, and and you'll be fine. Doctor Clapper, your job at True North Health, uh, you deal with people maybe that uh, may need to go on water fast. It's a little bit uh, of an area where it's a very small. Uh, percentage of the population that you may ever see in that regard. But for the person that may want to visit your website or maybe uh, visit a webinar or possibly get some advice through um, you know, Skype or what have you, uh, tell us about what people can do to, to maybe start making some better, better choices. I mean, some people I think have it in them to stop on a dime and change everything. Other people may take some need to take steps. Absolutely. And uh, there's wonderful resources available. And um, I will invite people to, uh, to check out a couple of websites. Yes, uh, I were, I'm a staff physician at uh, True North Health Center in, San Fran- in, uh, in Santa Rosa, California, about an hour north of San Francisco. And, um, yes, uh, we, do, um, uh, we do water fasting here to, for some patients. And it's a useful uh, therapeutic tool if people walk in with runaway high blood pressure, out-of-control diabetes. Absolutely, a water fast is a very powerful tool to lower that high blood pressure, uh, clear out their diabetes, makes migraine headaches go away, clears out asthma, uh, clears out inflamed joints. It's a very powerful therapeutic tool. Uh, done under medical supervision, and uh, we have MDs on staff here to do that. 
Um, but again, we make it very clear that it's not about the fast, uh, no matter how long a fast that you do. Uh, what really matters is what you eat after the fast, because uh, if you fall back into into, uh, into cheeseburger and olive oil lamb there after the fast, then, then all the good that you've done in the fast is undone. But what really matters is that healthy, whole food, plant-based diet pouring through your body day after day, week after week, month after month. Uh, if you do that, you don't, nobody needs to fast. Uh, then that's really where the therapeutic magic is. It's in a healthy, whole food, plant-based diet. But if people would like to check out our program, uh, go to um, uh, go to the website. You can Google True North uh, Health Center, uh, or our website is healthpromoting.com. Um, and you'll find lots of resources there. Um, yes, you can arrange a phone consultation with me uh, through that website. And um, there's uh, many good books available now. Um, I like one called The Green Scene Diet uh, by um, the author's Burson, B-E-R-S-O-N. Uh, that gives you practical advice for uh, starting on a whole food plant-based diet. Uh, Dr. Thomas Campbell has written The Campbell Plan. Uh, that's another nice program. Uh, but on our, our website, our cooking instructors, um, uh, Kathy Fisher, her website is straightupfood.com, and she's got lots of, uh, uh, of good ideas and recipes. Uh, and our other cooking instructor, Katie Peterson, she does plantbasedkatie.com. She has a, she's got a, uh, a plant-based food uh, boot camp that you can take online, and so she'll she'll walk you through the steps. So there's no end of uh, good resources, but you started out by checking out our website, um, healthpromoting.com, and that's your North website, and uh, and you can arrange a uh, phone consultation or a Skype consultation with me uh, through that website. And of course, Dr. Uh, Goldhammer and Dr. Lyle uh, involved there with True North Health, they do a fantastic job, and, and what Dr. Lyle does on the, uh, the psychological end, I think, is outstanding as well. Well, Dr. Clapper, I want to thank you for your time and your in incredible information that you gave us today. Again, the website, drclapper.com. If you'd like to find out more information, uh, we appreciate your time, and thank you for sharing a little bit about your nutrition-based medicine. Thank you, John. It's uh, been an honor to speak with you, and uh, great to share this information with your listeners, and I wish them all the best of health and happiness. Take care. Dr. Michael Clapper here on the John Mandola Show. We are driven by McCarthy Tire and Automotive Centers.